<laughs> so, welcome back to Daytime Live. We are joined by Dr. Leanne Levers of the Caribbean Policy Research Institute, otherwise known as Capri, who's here to talk to us about their launch from their latest report, which is entitled Coming to Terms, The Social Costs of Unequal Access to Safe Abortions. Mm, that, that is a Welcome. powerful... Doctor. Title there. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much. But before we jump into it, uh, Dr. Leanne, please tell us what exactly does Capri do? So Capri is a policy-based research think tank. So we produce reports and research about policy issues ranging from government governance to social justice. And our main aim is to produce evidence-based evidence research about these various issues. So making sure that our, our reports are always led by the evidence, the research that's available to us, and so on. You know, in diving straight into the issue, um, tell, tell, tell us why do you think women in Jamaica are still having unsafe abortions? Well, I think women are having unsafe abortions because, well, obviously one, because it's illegal, but there are a range of reasons that women actually seek out abortions at the cost of risking their lives, but as well as risking life imprisonment, which is the current punishment for having an abortion under the Offenses Against the Person Act. Oh. Wow. Okay. So um, I think there is this narrative that reckless women have abortions but actually many of the reasons that women have abortions have are unintended so we all know that there's a huge issue around gender-based violence in this country and i believe that one third of women who are under the age of 15 who do end up being pregnant report that their first experience was actually one that's forced mm -hmm. and we know that intimate partner violence is something that takes place across ages and across parent status as well so ranging from women who are i believe it's 18 percent of women who are 21 to 24 report having intimate partner violence as well as women who have had I believe it's 34 percent of women who have had more than five children also report uh, intimate partner violence which can include forced sexual intercourse and that really has an impact on a woman's agency to be able to decide when she's going to get pregnant. Mm, wow. I, I, I guess there are other reasons like medical reasons there are other it's medical reasons, so, uh, you know, not being able to carry children to full term. There's also the issue of sex education. So, you know, in Jamaica, our message through sex education in schools is really that of abstinence, which avoids conversations around the use of contraceptions. And so you find that quite a proportionate number of unintended pregnancies arise from the fact that women and men don't know how to use pre uh, contraceptives or they use it incorrectly. So that's also another that's issue that drives yeah. getting uh, caught in the yeah. as well. That's wonderful, <clears throat> Leanne. Thank you for sharing that. That's definitely a, 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 a lot to think about. Um, what will your, your launch, that's on Thursday, what yes. do you aim to teach, obviously, both women and men um, from your launch on Thursday? I think it's one to disrupt this narrative that there are only a certain type of women who access unsafe illegal abortions and to note that actually what the law is doing is not preventing abortions from taking place because obviously as we see approximately anywhere between 6,000 and 22,000 abortions take place each year. So what the law is actually doing is forcing disproportionately poorer women to access unsafe illegal abortions which has a not only implications for women and children in terms of the health complications that they can suffer as a result of that loss of access to education, but then that has a knock on effect on the society, whereas we are imposing unnecessary kind of issues on the healthcare system where you know the public healthcare system has to treat the complications that arise out of that and that I believe carries a cost of at least $1.4 million Jamaican, in addition to the knock-on effect of essentially creating a generation or generational issues of poor parenting, which then re reinforces this cycle of young mothers having children, and then those children growing up and having issues in terms of participation in crime, in terms of participation in uh, uh, sexual exploitation, which then increases the propensity for them themselves to become, um, you know, unintentional teen mothers. Leanne, that's, yeah. that's amazing. You know, when you're having discussions like these, you need to have the right persons who are going to disseminate the correct information. 
So with that being said, who will be on your panel? So Dr. Um, Minister Cuthbert Flynn is definitely going to be on the panel, as well as myself. And then we also have a professional medical doctor who will also be on the panel to give some of the scientific background that will speak to some of the health complications, some of the issues that the public health care system is having as a result. And as we know, Minister Cuthbert Flynn has also been quite an advocate of repealing this law and shifting um, the change. So I think uh, those persons are well equipped to speak to the issues at hand and how much the government is not only incurring, but also the medical system or the healthcare system as well. And so those are the people that will be on the panel, in addition to myself. So Leanne, I have a, I have a question for you. Um, personally, I feel that, oh my goodness, the fact that a woman still has to have um, permission sure. to decide what to do with her body. I think that's so archaic and I just can't believe that we, you know, this is where we are. However, how close do you feel that we are um, to having this amended or changed altogether? How close do you think we are to implementing? Well, I think I think one of the recommendations that comes out of this report is that we are asking for a secret conscience vote to take place within Parliament. And the reason that we're asking for that is because I think the issue of morality is not what we're disputing here. It's OK to be pro-choice. It's OK to be pro-life. What we are saying is that women are having abortions. This is a fact of life. The fact that the abortions are illegal is what is causing the issue. I think it is important that we recognize that the evidence shows that having unequal access to safe abortions is creating a disproportionate effect and impact, not only on poorer women and children, but also on the society. And so there may be people who are pro-life, but still agree with the idea that, hey, if women are going to have abortions, they should be having them in a way that is safe, in a way that does not incur additional costs to the society, but also in a way that does not increase the likelihood of death. I mean, 80%, 85% of abortion mater or uh, maternal deaths are related to unsafe abortions. And so women are actually dying. Children are dying. Women, children are suffering with issues of um, disabilities, of higher mortality rates. Wow. And as again, this ultimately creates a, uh, an effect on the on the Jamaican society as a whole. Definitely, so I think definitely, the issue yeah. of morality is not one that we're trying to dispute here. It's we're just else. presenting So, Leah, we are, this is such a topic that we need much more time to discuss it. But quickly, um, where can we find you on social media? We have about 10 seconds left. And I know persons might want to reach out just to have this conversation with you. Where can we find you on social media quickly? You can find all of our work at Capri.Caribbean on Instagram, but also Capri.Caribbean on uh, Twitter. And so, and well as reaching out to us at Capri.Caribbean on Facebook. So please just reach out to us. We'd love to hear the comments on the research and the feedback that you're feeling about uh, the evidence that we presented to you on Thursday at 11 a.m. Thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you so much for that. That was Thanks amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining thank us. You, thank you, Dr. Leavers. <laughs> He's a, still stuck on the doctor. Have, have, He's have still a, like, hey, doc. Have a good one. She's not that kind of doctor, doctor. <laughs> thank right. you, Dr. Leanne. That's thank wonderful. You. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Daytime Lab will be right back, guys. Yes, we have some reggae month facts. And we have a little game that I am going to lose. But that's okay. We'll soon come back. Join us after the break.